That'll make nine, 11, go 13. You keep going, if I go nine, that's 1800 horsepower. So don't floor it now. No, <laughs> Without doubt, one of Australia's most impressive true streetcars, Quentin Feast's 1974 Holden Alhage Tirana has the runs on the board when it comes to results. Having entered Street Machine's gruelling drag challenge three times and winning outright three times, the Tirana has also taken out the King of the Street and Street Outlaw events respectively. We caught up with Quentin and Motex Mark McCoy for the lowdown on what makes this simple street Holden so remarkable. Hey Jordan, what are we doing here tonight? Uh, we're going for a cruise in Quentin's uh, seven second street Tirana. <laughs> street car, I thought it was a drag car. <laughs> street when it's on the street, drag when it's on the drag strip. <laughs> yeah, so. Rally car. Why don't you uh, open the bonnet Quentin and give us a bit of a rundown on the uh, engine setup. So I noticed there's a bit of damage on the back Quentin. That was at Grudge Kings, unfortunately it yeah. touched the wall. Yeah. Was the parachute pulled you into the wall, did it, or? Yeah, no. the parachute went up and left, lifted the back of the car off the ground and had a high-speed wheelbarrow. Yeah. Not much control. <laughs> oh well, that's racing. That's racing. Unfortunately, every time you guys go down the track, I always think, I hope you get to the other end, you know what I mean? Like, it can <laughs> hey, go so do I. <laughs> it can go pear-shaped pretty quick, can't it? <laughs> it can, it, yeah. Well, you were, you were getting moved around in the deep end at Swan Hill on the weekend. On a couple of passes. Yeah. We've got some good in-car shots of that for you, too. Yeah. That's, that's just the side wind picking up the shooters. It, all, it's, uh, it wasn't overly windy there that day, was it? No, we had, the para we had the GoPro on the back of the car filming backwards watching the shoot for about the first six runs and um, it didn't play up once and then we took the GoPro off there and put it inside the car and it picked the back of the car up. So I can't tell you exactly why, but the guys on the start line said it yeah, lifted and went left again and <laughs> trying to wear, wear out the steering wheel bearings pretty quickly. So it's done it twice, so that shoot's done now. I'll put twin shoots on it, I think. I'm not 100% sure if it's an aero issue. Seems to happen um, pretty much right on 300k an hour. Yeah. Um, if I pull it at sort of 280 or 285, it seems to be fine. So just the combination could be, possibly it's not mounted in the exact perfect location on the back of the car. I'm not 100% sure, but it's gonna get, it's only done it since we put that shoot on, so I'll get rid of that shoot and go smaller twin shoots. So I've noticed, Quentin, that the manifold and the throttle body is just stock GM six liter stuff. Is that right? It certainly is. No thing from day one. <laughs> and that's flowing an estimated what? Uh, 16, 17, 18. How much power no, do you think we, this is making? We actually probably had it up close to 1800 at um, 1800 horsepower at the crank. Yeah. Uh, Swan Hill for that last pass. We put a bit more in it. Oh, when it went wheels up. Yeah, when it carried yeah. the wheels to the 120 foot mark. Yeah. <laughs> This engine though, like for those that don't know, you've, you're still running GM heads, block. Yep, still four um, bolt heads. Um, yeah, they're, they're production heads. That all that's really been done is Higgins has, has ported them. Um, the the block's still an LQ9 block. It's not grout filled. It's not overly an exotic setup then, really, is it? Like you're way past probably what this bottom end's rated for. Yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> way with yes. That's an understatement, or we don't. Yeah, well, we don't know the limit. Like you know, a lot of. A lot of people have had this sort of combination and they've broken it a lot less power, but mm. we've got our beliefs on why that is. So. Yeah. What's changed in the car since you were running, say, high sevens? So, uh, I think you ran um, a few high sevens at quarter and then... We, with the old turbo setup and unported heads, we ran 8.0 at 172, I think was our best. We ran a lot of 8.0s, just never quite got into That's the That's right, you were running, you were, you were getting down to the 8.0s and stuff. Yeah, 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 I think we ran 32 passes in the 8.0s or something and just never cracked that seven. And so I ended up, um, decided to put bigger turbos on it. And uh, that's when we went and had the head CNC'd by Nathan and um, came out and first time at the track it went 7.75. In four what, street trim. So. What turbos are they? They're Garrett GTW 3884s. So they're a 67 mil billet yeah. wheel. Yep. They're like a they're like a new version of the old TR4Z, aren't they? 
Correct, yeah. yeah. The cartridge is actually yeah. a TO Z cartridge, you're yeah. dead right. It's just a different um, comp cover and compressor wheel. So. What exhaust housings are they? Uh, they're, they're a 115 twin scroll um, twin inlet housing. So how many cubes is this engine? 403. Yeah. Yep. Four inch okay. stroke crank with a four inch bore. Yep. So what's your ultimate aim with this Quentin? You just, are you going to keep pushing it or? Do you have a goal or is it just keep, you just keep going away. quicker? Oh, you know. Like, <laughs> what do you say? Look, I got, I want to go, I want to go as fast <laughs> as I can, but we keep, we keep breaking our own, we keep setting ourselves goals. Yeah. And we keep breaking and then we go, well, how much more? So it's, it's easy with a boosted motor. You, if you've got more turbo left and the fuel system can cater for it, you turn the boost up, you go faster. Yeah. So, we, don't, we don't really know where it's going to end because it, you know, each time we go to the track, we go, right, we'll put 26 pounds of boost in it. And we go, oh, do you really want to go that high? And we go, yeah, okay. And then the next time we go to the track, it's like, if we put more in, it'll go faster. Yeah. So hence, up near the 28 pound mark at Swan Hill, and it went faster. So, and nothing's hanging out of it. The intake manifold hasn't popped off. So we don't really know what the damage fuse is going to be. You say it's not much boost, and like for a race engine, no, mm. but for, again, this combo, you're yeah. talking, it's still, it's all production heads. It's a it's a LQ9 head gasket. True. We're not fire ringed. Um, they're not bigger studs. It's not a grout filled block. Um, well, most most people running these setups, to be honest, are running about half that boost. Like realistically, oh, a, lot, a lot of guys go up into a, sort of twenty pound. But uh, yeah, yeah. No, I'm comparing it to guys running small blocks, but they're not they're not street cars. Is, you know? they're I was about to say they race they race cars. How yeah. many k's are they doing? That's it. Yeah. Well, I haven't touched anything on this car. From I put the exhaust back on and um, and seats back in it. But you've just come in it for the first time on the way here from your place, and yeah, it just drives pretty docile. You know, for a little hydraulic roller cam and um, you know a lot of standard engine parts, it's, it drives very nicely. Yeah, it's well matted. It idles pretty smooth. It's not rough. It's yeah. not like a big. You know, you get in an NAV8 and they're rough, big stall converters. It's, it's not like that at all. What I, I thought was um, very impressive, the, the highway diff gearing, the engine's doing what, 2100 k's? 2100, yeah. Something like that at 100 k's an hour? So you don't have like a gear vendors or anything on No it? gear no, vendor. Nothing. Just Paul Rogers Turbo 400 three speed gearbox and three double O diff gears with 28 inch tall tyres in the back. Yeah. So you'd take off in second? Yeah, yeah. We, since we've done the Turbo 400, we've just been launching in second. And So I guess what's, I guess, different about this streetcar is it's got a full MoTeC EFI system and you've got a lot of data logging on this. But yeah. Can you go run through all that? Yeah. Oh, well, the Not data... just the engine, but you've got it throughout the whole car. Yeah, you, you, data logging, yes, a lot of data logging, but also the, um, uh, the control systems is what we were just talking about off air a second ago. And you were asking about traction control and running that. And that there was a previous video you guys did um, where we actually we had the traction control on and basically what we do is we pull timing out and uh, well the ECU pulls timing out very very fast to reduce torque so it doesn't blow the tires off we control how much slip the tires got now we've never done that at drag challenge or on any racetrack anywhere except for one day at colder we did two passes and it was popping but then we were realizing well sorry when it did it it was pulling timing but we we're getting pops and everyone thought that was the traction control and what it actually was was by retarding the timing you're firing the cylinder um you're trying to burn the air and fuel um, with the say the ignition timing at zero degrees the pistons all the way up you've got more cylinder pressure and we couldn't jump the spark we didn't have enough ignition system to deal with the cylinder pressure that was in there and that's why it was popping so we turned the traction control off it kept doing it just so happened that the car did four 790s back to back which was just a bit of a freak and, and the video right, went up that it was <laughs> oh, traction controls working well it yeah. was it was misfiring because it couldn't jump the spark yeah, at peak yeah. torque and then clean up once you got past I, it i remember that day 790s mm. it was like you're a bracket racer it was that consistent yeah. well we did it at the, well you did it at swan hill you yeah, ran two passes you did 744 and 744 because we didn't change we and, didn't change anything and yeah. i walked up to you and i said oh what did you run that last pass 744 and i go no no what about the one beforehand you got 744 and i was confused for a second then i realized oh the exact same time yeah Sometimes we get a bit lax, we, you, know, you make a change, like we never really do, we never do two passes the same, we know what it's going to do, so we make a change, but if you don't hit save on the laptop because you're talking and stuff, then it doesn't actually change it in the ECU, so we went out and did two passes identical back to back, literally to the T. Yeah. So then that comes down to how well the closed loop systems work, um, you know, everything from RPM on launch, boost control, ignition, everything, and it just literally is identical back to back. The only part that's inconsistent is the driver's reaction time. Yeah.
it, but if you can't control your suspension and adjust it, it, you just won't hold the tracks. And this is the game we play, a drag challenge, power management, suspension management, and same as um, Swan Hill. So it was one of the, once we put some good shocks in the car, we were able to start 60 footing. Um, then, as you may remember from um, previous times, with the power glide we had, much shorter first gear, we were putting heaps of power in and the thing was starting to power wheelie. So then I had to put good shocks in the front. Um, and that was when we also changed to a turbo 400 with the idea to, to leave in second gear. Yeah. Um, we weren't leaving, we were sort of leaving around the 34, 3500 RPM and 10 or 12 pound of boost and the thing would just go to the sky with the power glide. Um, the turbo 400, Swan Hill on the weekend, we left on the last pass, 16, just over 16 pound of boost. That's the last pass, yeah. Yeah, 16 pound and 4100. 4100. So we're not leaving it heaps and it, yeah, it drove out and power wheeling to the 120 foot marker I got off it. So and what, what are you crossing the line at with that speed? How hard do you reckon this to? Yeah. 72, 7300. It's not too bad. So yeah, it's sort of seen about 7.5% slip in the converter at the top end. So considering we're not spinning the motor that hard, um, that's not bad. So. Yeah, yeah. Shows you how straightable the power band is too. Mm -hmm. That's a big, big 10 and a half inch um, TCE converter that's very, very tight. So it does have a heap of download drive. So it's got great lock up on the freeway, hence the really low RPM. Yeah. Good for economy, drivability, drag challenge. Mm. So tell us about the Motec side of it, because I think a lot of people are inter interested in that. Well, what this one has is a Motec M150 ECU. So that's like the, it's let's say it's the larger version of the, the engine management system we have. And the main reason we did that because uh, Q and I sort of first started racing this car with a carbureted engine and we put a Motec dash like you see in the touring cars we put one of those in and Q just got hooked on the on the data so we wanted to make sure that in the ECU we could also have like as many sensors as we could possibly get on the car so as we keep talking it's all about the data but it's all about making sure you have a sensor to measure something if you don't know how something works the only way, real way to work out how it works is to put a sensor on it. Now, I, I know it all sort of sounds fairly fanciful and all that kind of stuff, but I mean, that's what we do for a living. So we made sure that we put the ECU in to start with. That's got enough capacity to put sensors on everything. We've got EGTs, we've got laser ride height, we've got damper position, we've got pressures all over the turbo system because I mean, we, you know, you put an intercooler on, you want to know if the thing is actually any good. Yeah. So we've got before and after pressure sensors. And just sort of things like that and i mean that the suspension stuff sort of started when we got the the good shocks because you know through my sort of contacts i know a lot of guys that do this kind of thing for a living so they want to know what sort of damper velocities and things like that so you know we put some sensors on now the laser ride height even though it sounds yeah. like pretty Funky. sort of space age yeah. it just it, i mean i've got this stuff lying around at work so yeah. It's off a Le Mans car, so we thought, oh, we'll just put that on. So when people see the little red dot under the car, yeah, it's, it's no BS, it's the laser ride height. And it, it gives us something that we can always measure. And everything about data logging is even if you don't know what something's supposed to be, at least you've got the data and a year down the track, you go back and yeah. compare it to everything. You, you can't backdate stuff and wonder yeah. what was happening. The This ECU can remember well, at the moment, I think we've got 270 or 280 odd channels, and they're up to 272 channels, yeah. and some of them are up to a thousand times a second <laughs> down the track. So the ECU can remember that, Q can't remember all that, and I can't remember all that. But we've got it all on the laptop. So as long as you've got the laptop, you can go back, and we go, we do this all the time. We go back to to earlier runs like the 775. What was the launch like there? So we can we can know that like. You know if we do a better 60 foot we can have a look at the g-force because everything's about acceleration so we can overlay them quite accurately because we're logging that at a few hundred times a second the g-force and you simply overlay it and you can see well that run definitely had to be faster because it's more g-force yeah so we just basically went nuts i mean we got the the color dash in there that but that's just a pretty screen realistically that doesn't really do a lot the ecu is the crux of it and um we've actually We've now done more or less a drag racing specific ECU and it's more sort of born of like you know what we've been doing over the last few years and, and a lot of the drag racers sort of want their boost control to work a bit different and their launch to work a little bit different so we actually wrote a drag one it's essentially the same as what you'd run in a circuit but it's just got those those little tweaks that the drag guys want and it, transmission it, stuff transmission stuff yeah 
we're more, oh, sorry, we're more, creeper box, I should say. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we're more paying attention to the fact that it's got a like a, a trans braked engine, uh, trans brake gearbox. So we've got the creeper in that. That everything's through the ECU. And again, the reason for that is I know when he's pressing the button. I know when he's pressing the creeper button, and we all logged it. And a year or two down the track, we can use that data as well because we know what buttons he's pressing. It's not all external systems dragged all over the place. It's all one cohesive mm. sort of unit, so to speak. So okay. how, how long have you been, I guess, how many years of uh, data have you got with the Motu? How long has that been in the car? Five years, six years. It's been a while. Five, year, five years worth of data, there's gigabytes of logging. Yeah. Yeah. And was, this, was this thing supercharged years ago? No, that was Jeremy Newman's. Oh. I get asked this question yeah, to this the day. Yeah. It was that awesome. Was the with the side blow, yep. wasn't it? Yep. Nice to go there. Come the racing car. car. Yeah, it yeah. was from uh, Kangaroo Flats. I still yeah. remember Junior the... Uh, LH was the plate. <laughs> That's right. Same coloured car. So what setup did you have before? Uh, okay, I got this car in 2000. Um, I actually had a blue SOR Tirana before that that got written off by a bloke running a red light. Um, I bought this body shell from Cryo Bay off a bloke for... $1,500 I think, painted and tubbed, back when Tirana's were worth nothing. Um, brought it home and put my 253 out of the other car in it and got bored with that, put a 350 Chev in it. Um, what did we do, cracked a piston, built a 383 with alloy heads, NA, and thought that was pretty cool, felt fast to me, big converter like we're talking about. And funny enough, this is the day I met Luke Foley, we raced at a colder, and I'll never forget, and I thought it was pretty cool, it was just a Commodore next to me, couldn't even hear it. No, at, just before the finish line, he went flying past me. And I'm like, what the hell's in this Commodore? And it's the same VH he's got today. And, and a look, and he goes, just a 5.7 from the Wreckers and a $400 eBay turbo. And then we went to PCM and, and uh, watched all these guys just make heaps and heaps of power with these turbo LSs. And we're like, wow, like, yeah, you got to build a, a, a decent solid roller engine at A, and then you can just go to the Wreckers and buy an LS and put a turbo on it and make more. And like, so I basically wasn't going to build it stock, but the more research I did into um, learning, you know, what's going to make them hold together and speaking to lots of people, I come up with this sort of combo, keep it mild. The original plan, like you, you asked before, how much power did you want to make? And I was hoping to make eventually a thousand horsepower. And a lot of people laughed at us and said, you won't make that, it's not possible, blah, blah, blah. Well, we made 1400 with the old, with the original turbo setup at the motor. And then with the new turbos and ported heads, we made that at the tyres on the dyno and we've run, I think we're running another three pounder boost on the weekend roughly. Um, and we know it makes more because it's using more fuel and it's accelerating faster. And so we would estimate, we probably saw in that last run, the motor was probably seeing about 1800 horsepower. And just for the kids out there, Quentin, what's the North 100 time? I haven't looked at the data from this from one this weekend. Five four seconds. Hey, depends on where. <laughs> is it as, is it as fast <laughs> as a Tesla? Hey, it's one yes. one point five four seconds on the strip. Yeah. But like on the street, it's not quite that fast <laughs> because of speed limits and stuff. <laughs> if you're, this is the argument Mark and I get into, and he will, he's probably correct. He'll argue that um, if you're going to check speed not to one hundred, it's the second the G-force makes any movements at all. But you, it's it's funny in like that first point three of a second. Um, the car hasn't even broken the beams on the start line. <laughs> um, uh, three hundredths of a second, I think. Um, it hasn't even broken the beams and move. Like there's a big shock. The, the suspension starts to separate in the front. It still hasn't broken the like. It, it's the car starting to move. So when I look at my data, I normally go by the front wheel speed sensor and the front wheel speed sensor. I measure from there and I get 1.28 seconds, not to 100. <laughs> It's on camera, mate. You can go 1.2 <laughs> anything you want. I'll go with physics. It's, it's, it's plenty fast, put it that way. So, well, not, well 100 to 200 was, uh, what was that? That was 2.4 seconds up at Grudge Kings, I think. Yeah. From 100 to 200, when it's already on a roll and everything's set. Yeah, so under two and a half seconds from 100 to 200. So, yeah, streetcar that's doing the half track. So, you're talking 18, uh, sorry, 200. So, you're talking not to 200 k's an hour in about no. four seconds. No, no, no. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, north yeah. to 200 in about four seconds. Yeah. Yep. So, on a grippy, on a really good grippy track when you can throw heaps of power at it. But from a drag racing point of view, if you look at like the cars that are up at Grudge Kings, the guys that are running like mid and low fours, like, yeah, theirs is phenomenal. So, yeah, yeah. you know, like they'd be way faster again if it's all relative, I suppose. Mm. What do you say if you go for a drive, Jordan? Definitely looking forward to it. Enjoy your driving, Jordan. All right. <laughs> Have you, uh, the most thought question is that as he turned this thing as low as possible, because 
we've done a special throttle map for you so we've actually set it up so that the um the throttle pedal and the throttle body are definitely different so if you can go full potato on the throttle mate it'll only give you about 35 percent throttle the throttle body so <laughs> which is which has still got a reasonable amount of boost surprisingly yeah. enough. <laughs> <laughs> I will, we'll show you a few things when you're in the car yeah. you can um you can change it on the fly as you're going and you can turn it from 300 horsepower to 1800 horsepower as you go and anything in between click of a button a bit uh, different to change it some... yeah. <laughs> a bit different to change on some jets <laughs> yeah that's <Yeah>. it <laughs> So at the my line was I'm used to driving cars that are underpowered but handle pretty good and this is complete 180. It handles right <laughs> on the racetrack. <laughs> they keep telling me there's no corners. <laughs> Alright, so what's the starting process of this thing? Oh, you don't have to touch any pedals, middle switches for ignition, so flip that up. And then there's a starter button, it's just like a key, just oh, put, hold that in until it goes to start. So it's uh, a bit uh, bit cosy there for you? It's easier to sustain it. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta pull a Houdini to get out of this, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty small in the back there. See the roll cage? Oh yeah, no. This is the one like the supercars with all like the oh, yeah. stuff in it. Is that overlaid on the yeah. GoPro? Yeah. Is it automatically yep. going yep. Well, this, 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 is, this is the Motec camera. No, that's recorded live. So you whip the card out yep. and just and that's what it is. Yep. Yep. So you don't have to post process it or anything like that. Well, this is what they need it for the adjudication for crashes and stuff in supercars. So that's, and we just happen to have one lying around. So I thought I'll chuck that in as well. What have you got RPM and boost? RPM, throttle, that's speed, uh, the G-Force. Unfortunately, the G4 sensor was vibrating around too much, so it doesn't really mean much. That's the one. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, you need the audio on that one too. <laughs> that wasn't fun. 
<laughs> oh yes, fucking heart and flop. palpitations there, <laughs> dude. That was you look at the actual log. The, the, I don't know. The, that's the um, estimated speed, isn't it? No, no, no. That's that's the vehicle speed. But the trouble is, we're sending it over can and, the, and it rips it up so quickly. Yeah, it doesn't actually. Yeah. It's not. It actually, we hit three hundred. It's sort of been so. Yeah. It was over three. It's actually faster than what it says on there because yeah, but like you can't just let it go through the camera on that.